Welcome to EvoFound. This is Neil Shorty with Leeds Forensic Systems, and today we are going to talk to you about virtual comparison microscopy and virtual microscopy using the EvoFinder software. This is one of those fun little things where traditionally we're used to using a comparison microscope to look at the samples for bullets and cartridge cases for examinations. But now using a 3D imaging system, we can generate that three-dimensional image put it into our database, and now use the computer system to be able to view and manipulate the sample both individually or as a comparison between two samples. Now, what I'm looking at here on my screen to start off with, we have a cartridge case that's been loaded. This is a 40 caliber Smith & Wesson that's been fired already from a weapon. The system has scanned the sample and put it into the database. So now we can actually see that three-dimensional representation on the screen. The nice thing about the software is we can use this as just a virtual microscope, so we can take a single image and manipulate this in three dimensions. We can rotate the sample image, we can change the lighting orientation on the sample, so we can go move the light around the optical axis, or we can bring it more on axis or oblique to give us a different contrast in seeing the details of the image that we have. We can also change our brightness and contrast, or lock the lighting into a new lighting position to leave that contrast position for being able to do our examination. Now one of the nice things about this is there's a lot of things that we can do with the software. We can also, <clears throat> as I had commented, look at comparison samples and because we scan the sides of the cartridges, we can also view the side of the cartridge case itself to see that instead of just the face. Let me just sort of hide my lighting controls. And now what we're looking at is this small window on the top here is showing the side of the cartridge case, which is shown in this green rectangle on the side here. If I want to move that region of interest that I'm examining, I can reposition it in that window to be able to view the section that I'm interested in. With these imaging controls for both the side and the face of the cartridge case, just to give you a quick introduction, we can change the magnification of the sample that we're looking at. So we can zoom in or zoom out on the image for more detail. We can automatically fit to the window, either as seeing the cartridge case fill it or see it at 100% pixel to pixel resolution. So we can get full detail out of what we're looking at. And then we can go to any magnification in between. We also have different contrasting techniques, which give us the ability to look at the sample differently to try and see what we need to in the sample image. Now let's get in a little closer than what we're looking at here so you can get better detail. But basically we're looking at a 3D model right now. We can also look at a 2D model, which is just a grayscale image of the sample that we're looking at. Or we can overlay that 2D image on the 3D structure for a third contrast technique or mode of viewing the sample. And each of these just gives us a slightly different view of the sample that we're looking at to try and get that detail that we want to see for the sample to do our examination or our comparison. Now, with this, I can also use this as a virtual comparison microscope. I'm going to unload this sample here. <clears throat> I'm going to bring up another sample that I had loaded already, where we have two samples that are from the same source. I'm going to zoom in so we can, or sorry, zoom out so we can see both samples simultaneously. My sample for test on the left and my sample to compare to it on the right. I can take the sample, I can rotate it so that I can see these in the preferred orientation where I have my, my firing pin drag off to the right. And now I can use this where I can take one sample and line it up with the other to use as the virtual comparison microscope. I can move the samples in the XY. I can change the lighting simultaneously or synchronously between the samples, or I can move them independently. So if I wanted to move the lighting together, I can do that and lock that in place. I can also manipulate both samples simultaneously or independently, so I can get these aligned just how I want for that virtual comparison microscopy aspect. There's other functions in here also that make the examination easier, where we can do, <coughs> excuse me, um, magnification of an overlap region between the two. So what we can do is we can put the magnification window over this, we can zoom in on that region of interest, and we get these red and blue lines that give us a depth profile where those two samples intersect, and we can see how those depth profiles relate to one, one another. So if I have some aperture shear that I want to look at up close, I can get both of those profiles 
lined up right next to each other and I can see what that depth profile looks like just by using this magnification function. Additionally, we also have an overlap function where we can take our samples and overlap one image on top of the other. This overlap control, we have the ability to see this as an additive overlap, a subtractive overlap, or a transparency, and we can give preference to one image or the other so we can toggle between the two to see how these align to one another. Additionally, if I'm too lazy to move the slider on my own, I can have it toggle between the two images in that region simultaneously or automatically by the software control itself. We do have some automatic alignment functions in here also, and other things that go with that, but I wanted to show you a little bit more about the 3D modeling that we have for doing this. So we've shown you the XY manipulation of the sample. We can also tip the sample back in the Z axis, so we can see this tipped back. So if you normally take your sample, tip it back 10 or 15 degrees for looking at the face of your cartridge case, we can still do that electronically with this 3D image. One other function that we have here is we can see a cross-sectional profile of the samples that we're working with. So using this plus D function or added dimension, I get a second view of the face of the cartridge case, and you'll see a cutoff that occurs where this one red line is on the sample image. On the sample image, I have a green line on the left and a yellow on the right that shows the cross-sectional depth profile, or if I use the sub-windows, I can tilt this back and I can see that sample tipped back in the z-axis and show the cutoff where that red line is on my sample image. If I grab that red line, I can also take it and move it to different regions on the sample so I can get a good look at the cutoff of the depth profile where that red line occurs on my sample image. There are a few quick access controls for lighting, which allows us to do different things where I can quickly toggle between different orientations of lighting. And I can also do lighting from multiple angles if that was something that I wanted to see. Now this gives you a quick introduction to our cartridge cases. We also have similar controls for viewing the bearing surfaces of bullets. <clears throat> now here we are looking at the side of a 9mm sample that we've, has traditional rifling, been scanned in the system. And again, I can use this as just a single microscope image or a virtual microscope image of the sample that we have. Here we can see our land engraved areas, our grooves, or our slippage marks cleanly engraved on the bearing surface of this bullet. And then we can use this to manipulate the sample. So we can change our lighting orientation. <clears throat> Excuse me. We can see the lighting from the right or the left side. We can also come in, change our brightness, contrast, and use our lighting controls to make the light more on axis or more oblique for the sample that we're looking at. We can lock that into position using our lock controls. Again, here's our brightness and contrast controls, and use these to be able to manipulate the sample to see it from the orientation and lighting characteristic that we want. Just like we saw with the cartridge cases, we can also change the mode of viewing. Right now we're doing a 3D view of the sample. Using this control, we can go to a 2D view, so it's a grayscale flat image, or we can overlay that 2D image on top of the 3D model for the third contrast method, the 2D plus D mode and all three of these available are available for all of our viewing preferences for both bullets and cartridge cases. Now, as we had done with the cartridges, we can also do comparisons between two samples. This time, instead of having a side-by-side -side split, we can do a vertical top-to-bottom type split where we can place one sample on the top, load a second sample on the bottom, and now we can take these two samples and line them up next to each other to see if we have comparison between or a match between any of the features on these samples. <clears throat> Using the different techniques, we can get different contrasting methods, which allows us additional ways to be able to view the samples differently. And in the case of damaged samples or fragments, we can also scan those in and use those for a simil similar type of comparison. And to give an idea as far as how some of these work, this is traditionally rifled, but we can also look at samples for a polygonally rifled so we can see how that detail comes out also for being able to use these in a comparison. Going into a full resolution, we have the 100% view on this. Now we have the full detail of the sample that we're looking at. As we had seen with the cartridge case side, 
we do have additional controls where we can do a magnification increase on a region of interest and see the depth profile at the point of intersection. We can also zoom in on that region of interest so we can get a better idea of what we're looking at and be, be able to perform a comparison between them. We can also do an overlapped region between the two. So if we wanted to get those lined up and then give a preference to one side or the other, I know these are not similar samples at all, but this still gives you an idea of how the functionality works of this aspect of software. We can also ask the software to automatically align these regions of interest to be able to get an idea of what it thinks for that comparison. Or we can also use a heat map to show the depth profile on the sample that we're imaging.